Hey everybody, I'm Matt Gordon. I introduced myself like 10 seconds ago, but there it is again. Um, uh, yeah, this is uh, you know really news time, global and local. Uh, uh, if you have no idea what I'm talking about for whatever reason, and I don't cover something, just ask and I will explain further. Uh, first thing, you don't actually need to read this, so it doesn't matter. Maybe it's miles. Oh. It's not really important. Um, it's going to matter later. Broken! So, uh, first up, global news. So, Passenger 3, uh, Tactical Preview 4, is the latest thing in there, you know, doling out the good features this time. They, they promised, you know, puppies and rainbows and uh, asynchronous spawning. So, no more downtime when your, when your passenger server is restarting. And uh, what else did they promise? Oh yeah, finally added a directive for minimum number of instances, so you still get the auto shut off, but you know you can always have one running, so you don't get that crappy 30 second, 30 60 second start time. Uh, and also some kind of hinting at the bottom about there being an enterprise edition of Passenger, which sounded kind of scary to me, but you know you'll have that. Um. <coughs> Snowman. Is uh, <laughs> my favorite uh, new feature in, in Rails 3, which I found out about this month. Uh, I don't know who made this thing up, but I think it's awesome. Um, it's uh, it's an addition to Rails 3 to handle a bug in IEs 5 through 8, where you know these crazy users they'll uh, kind of set their encoding on their forms to uh, you know, like Latin one or whatever, and uh, and the IEs they don't really they don't handle the uh, form directives correctly, so then they'll they'll you know, let them submit it as Latin 1 even though you ask for UTF-8 and everything goes wrong. So this is a workaround built specifically in the Rails. You actually stick underscore snowman in a directive in there and it works it out for you. Uh, I don't know why snowman per se. The blog was more funny than useful, but I thought it was pretty <laughs> awesome. Did you see um, they pulled it out? What's that? They pulled it out. Did they? Snowman's <laughs> gone. Now it's an X entity. Well, that's right. <laughs> this is way better than that. I think it is. Are they replaceable? <laughs> I know. Underscore E, actually. I know, right? Don't do that. Uh, speaking of Rails, uh, Release Canada came out. Uh, yeah, this is just for, for contrast here. So, when I was giving this presentation in April, I was mocking their you know, 500 megabytes. And in this post, these like, oh yeah, we're totally, Release Canada is coming up. Rails cop, we're gonna have it. We're definitely gonna have it. Okay, well, close to ish. But um, Blue Scanned is out. The biggest thing about that is uh, performance is mostly back to two, three levels. So, those of you that were crying about bad performance, it's mostly better, except for my skill adapter, which is still kind of crappy. Uh, but he swears it will be fixed, and everything he says is true. Three months. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I don't know what this slide is about. <laughs> so, Comic relief. What's that? Comic relief for this one. Oh, so for much of your news, for anybody who doesn't know, you just grab the first Google image as a result, right? That's accurate. Or, yeah. Oh, that's right. Iron Ruby. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, Microsoft's implementation of, of Ruby. Iron Ruby is pretty much on its deathbed at this point. They only had two people working on it, and one guy quit. He's like, Microsoft has no idea what they're doing, and they really have no intention of making this good. And then another guy who uh, who does a bunch of stuff with Mono is in charge of making sure that Iron Ruby works on Mono. Is like, yeah, it's actually even worse than that. Not only do they not know what they're doing, you don't care about it, but the whole thing's just hosed, and the repo's all messed up, and you can't edit things. And so, really, if you were counting on Iron Ruby, I would uncount on it. <coughs> Uh, uh, Redline, the Rails-based uh, project management you know, kind of track replacement, went one out this month. Uh, they were kind of quiet about exactly what that meant in their post, I thought, but hey, it's one out for an open source project, which is pretty neat. And uh, the Rails Rumble. <coughs> Is coming up. Uh, registration is at the, the first week of September. Those of you who don't know about the Rails Rumble every year, they have a contest to see uh, who can write a complete application in one weekend, and then you know, there's a winner who gets a sweet belt. And 
fun stuff. I think there's money involved, but it really is the belt. Um, and some previous uh, entrants have went on to, if I remember correctly, one eventually got funded by Y Combinator. Right. Um, <coughs> and some have continued with their apps and are making money and such. So. Yeah, this is this is ThoughtBots for 2007. And they make a bunch of money doing stuff. I don't remember if that's this is true. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember what of their what of their apps was the real trouble have. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in that kind of thing, registration is soon. Uh, okay. So I really had to dig deep for local news this time. Uh, so the the one actual legitimate local news, uh, Mike wrote uh, a plugin called uh, uh, Fix You Some Address Bar, because we got tired of this thing where you know you got a form or whatever, and you're here, and then you submit, and there are errors, and you end up here. Mm -hmm. And then the user does something crazy, like restart the browser, or go up to the address bar, hit enter, and then and then you get an exception, or you know everything's cranky. So. Uh, how do you want to explain about it, Mike? Um, it actually uses a new HTML5 JavaScript call that allows you to manipulate the address bar uh, to be what you want it to be, as long as it's on the same domain as the site that just uh, came down. Um, and so it works in Safari, Chrome, and it will work. It works in Firefox 4, although I don't know how many people are actually using Firefox 4 yet. It will probably never ever work in IE. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do? You snowman. Um, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty great. Like by default, you just have to install it, and it magically works. And then there's some directives for exceptions and things like that. Yeah, it essentially looks in your in your actions. If you do a render call to to render an action that is not the action that's processing, it automatically figures out what the correct URL for that action is and adds a little snippet of JavaScript to your page that fixes the address bar on the cool. page loads. Yeah, so check that out. That's under expected behaviors GitHub account. Um, and then I really wanted two pieces of local news, but I couldn't find one, so I went with this, this tweet, which I thought was really hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Less for SAS. I don't know that Tim here knows that. I know that. It's coming. <laughs> One step closer to Hamill. No, you're not going to Hamill. Yeah, I'm, I'm just to throw something out there, I used the uh, Google Spreadsheets gem for the first time in the last couple weeks. If you've never tried it, it's amazing. <coughs> it has one little quirk that I don't like, but if you pull down a row, the rows are immutable. You have to access it by you know, both indices to modify, but for reading, like it works just like you would hope that it would. You can use it like it's a database, you can use it like it's a table, you can use it like it's a hash. If you've never played with it, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Nick, how do you feel about MongoDB this one? Pretty good, actually. 1.6 is out now. So, oh hey, that would have been a lot better news point than some stupid spreadsheet gem, huh? <laughs> Mongo 1.6 is out. Uh, <laughs> There's some kind of screencast that I watched out there somewhere, on Tengen site presumably, but um, sharding support is in production now, replica sets are in production, um, they're already targeting single server durability for 1.8, which is stupid, they need to fix MapReduce performance because I need it right now, but um, sharding is there, so that'll help. And um, you can actually take, if you have a production server, they show you all the steps you have to do, if you have a production server on 1.4 whatever, and you want to migrate to a shard of 1.6, you can do it with zero downtime. You can add the 1.4 server to the set and then shut it down, it'll switch primaries. Like, it's really, it's really slick. So, uh, if you're into Mongo at all, it's, it's a good week. Cool. All right, team, next time, I want a lot more local news. I don't know, like, make up some gists or something. <laughs> or Tim Harvey, make something or sell something again. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I did update Access oh, Archival. Yeah, right. um, Access Archival now has a fancy little flag that you can turn on for a model where it's read only when archived. So if you if uh, an object is archived and then if someone tries to modify that object, it'll throw validation errors all over the place. Say so, no, you can't do that because it's archived. And you should unarchive it first.
for those of you not familiar with the That's Xcode cool. archive plugin, basically it's a, you know, a lot of web applications. There's a, some kind of, you know, you'll have like a project or something, there, and they'll let you archive it, which so you can kind of look at it, but you can't really do anything with it anymore. And so uh, this is just a plugin that provides all that functionality, and now also makes it immutable for you magically. Anything else? Conferences. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Hoedown coming up. Hoedown. I'm going. Um, the I'm hotel is kind want. of a pain about getting the rooms. There are still rooms available, but the hotel keeps denying it. So just hammer on them about it. <laughs> really? Yep. That's and uh, Windy City Rails will also be next month, I think, before we meet or right around that time. So. <coughs> and there's some since that Chicago. agile thing was. Yeah. On Saturday, there's a <coughs> Cincy Day of Agile, and it's 25 bucks. If you want to ride and go on, you might have to sit by one of my kids because they're going to go to the aquarium. <laughs>